Hi friends, it's Deanna Wilson with our Blooming Catholic Life. And I thought today I'd take a little look at humility as described by Francis in St. Benedict, kind of comparing the two rules, but it's a little difficult. So I'm going to have to also bring in something called the admonitions. So let us begin as we always do with, uh, not always, I wish, with the sign of the cross. Nomine Patris, Affiliate Spiritus Sancti, Amen. St. Francis's prayer for guidance before the crucifix. Summe glorioso Deus, Illumina Tenebras Cordis Mehi, et da mihi fidem rectum spem certum et caritatem perfectum, Domini ut fatium tuum sanctum et verax mandatum, Amen. In Nomine Patris, Affiliate Spiritus Sancti, Amen. So let's give this a little look. In the rule of the secular Franciscan order, the Pauline rule, the rule of 1978, it's not the clearest thing ever. Um, I don't know that the word humility comes in for the Franciscans, except in number nine, which is, I believe, in chapter two. It says, the Virgin Mary, humble servant of the Lord, was open to his every word and call. She was embraced by Francis with indescribable love and declared the patroness and advocate of his family. The secular Franciscans should express their ardent love for her by imitating her complete self-giving and by praying earnestly and confidently. Uniting, united themselves to the redemptive obedience of Jesus, this is number 10, who placed his will into the Father's hands, let them faithfully fulfill the duties proper to their various circumstances of life. Let them also follow the poor and crucified Christ, witness to him even in difficulties and persecution. 11. Trusting the Father, Christ chose for himself and his mother a poor and humble life, even though he valued created things attentively and lovingly. Let the secular Franciscans seek a proper spirit of detachment from temporal goods by simplifying their own material needs. Let them be mindful that according to the gospel, they are stewards of the goods received for the benefits of God's children. Thus, in the spirit of the Beatitudes, and as pilgrims and strangers on their way to the home of the Father, they should strive to purify their hearts from every tendency and yearning for possession and power. The 12 witnessing to the good yet to come and obligated to acquire purity of heart because of the vocation they've embraced, they should set themselves free to love God and their brothers and sisters. So not the clearest ruling on humility in the current secular Franciscan rule. Let's look at the rule of St. Benedict. This is the 2018 edition done by St. Benedict Press that is a modern translation. Their chapter seven is on humility. And they say, brothers, the Holy Scripture Christ was saying, for everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but the one who humbles himself will be exalted, Luke 14, 11. By these words, it declares to us that all exaltation is a kind of pride, which the prophet shows most carefully to be avoided when he says, Lord, my heart is not proud, nor are my eyes haughty. I do not busy myself with great matters, but with things too sublime for me. Psalms 131, 1. But why? Rather, I have stilled my soul, hushed it like a weaned child, like a weaned child on its mother's lap, so is my soul within me. Psalm 131, 2. Okay, so, so far, no more clear than the secular Franciscan rule. Um, let's see. Talks about a ladder. And we're here on the a couple paragraphs into the latter description it says the first step then of humility is for man to always have a fear of God before his eyes and never forget it. He, there's another typo there. Forget is two words in that this instance. Odd. He must be mindful of all that God has commanded and remember that those who have contempt for God fall into hell for their sins and that those who fear him have everlasting life awaiting him. Again, not the clearest. Don't sin. That's bad. Okay. But. Ah, so we always have to have fear of God before our eyes. Uh, then we have to let him recognize that God is always looking down on him from heaven, that all his actions, wherever he may be, are in clear view to the eye of God and are every hour presented to him by his angels. There's a whole bunch of scripture to back that up. The scripture forbids us to do our own will. Again, scripture. Calling to mind the scripture, we have a good reason to fear doing our own will. Sometimes a way seems right to a man, but the end of it leads to death. Proverbs 16, 25. Again, a lot of scripture, this is almost all scripture, barely um, bound together by other words. Let us then be on guard against evil desires because death sits close to the entrance of delight. Uh, 
Uh, the second step of humility is for a man not to be wedded to his own will, nor seek to satisfy his own desires, but to carry out the Lord's word. Skipping ahead, I'm just going to read the, the main points here. Uh, you know, copyright. The third step of humility is for man, out of love for God, to submit himself in obedience to his superior. Fourth step is when being obedient causes when being obedient causes things to become hard, contrary, or even if wrongs are done to him, for him to nonetheless embrace the suffering with a quiet conscience and not to grow weary and not to give in to them, since the scripture says, so then there's a whole bunch of scripture, quite a lot. The fifth degree of humility is for a man to hide nothing from the abbot, but rather by humble confession reveal all the evil thoughts of his heart and the secret faults he commits. Again, scripture. The sixth degree of humility is for a monk to be content with the lowest and most menial treatment, and in everything thinks of himself an evil and worthless servant. More scripture. The seventh degree is for a monk not only to pronounce with his tongue, but also in his very heart to believe himself to be the most abject and inferior to all, and humbling himself to say with the prophet, a lot more scripture. The eighth degree is for a monk to do nothing but what the common rule of the monastery or the examples of his seniors leads him to do. The ninth degree of humility is for a monk to refrain his tongue from speaking and be silent until a question is asked of him, remembering the saying of scripture. Lots of scripture here. Tenth degree is not to be easily moved and prompted to laughter. What? And there's scripture to back them up there, Franciscans. I'm just letting you know. The eleventh degree of humility is for a monk to speak gently, humbly, discreetly, with few words, without laughter, and without raising his voice. For it is written, yeah, there's scripture to back them up on this one too. The 12th degree of humility is for a monk to not only have humility in his heart, but to show it physically for all to see, so that whether he is doing the work of God in the oratory, the monastery, the garden, the journey, a field, wherever, wherever, friends. Thus, after ascending all these steps of humility, the monk will presently come to that love of God, which is perfect and casts out fear. So there's a lot there. It's really a lot of scripture put together as references, whereas normally when St. Francis uses scripture, he's using it like in a sentence, like as a part of a sentence, not as a separate quote. So St. Benedict has a bit of a different style there. But let's get into admonitions. So some of those things are covered in a lot of the admonitions. This would be, goodness, um, if you haven't seen this book, it's an interesting take. So um, John Michael Tabot no longer considers him his order to be Franciscan, but to have Franciscan lineage in their veins. They also have um, a good bit of the desert fathers in them. So some of his takes in here we've agreed with in my book club and some were a little questioning, but the admonitions, excuse me, the admonitions are all listed out here. And the chapter begins with the admonition. And then um, John Michael Talbot likes to give a description from his own life of what he looks, how it looks in his life, he believes. And then there's a further discussion. So let's go in. The one I thought spoke to it was admonition 17, the humble religious. But again, they all have, if you're using that Benedictine rule one, uh, Almost all the admonitions have to do with humility. But let's look at the one that says it explicitly, the humble religious, page 126. St. Francis wrote, blessed is the servant. See, that's from scripture, Matthew 24, 46, an example of how St. Francis does it. Blessed is the servant who takes no more pride in the good that God says and does through them than in that which God says and does through someone else. It is wrong for anyone to be anxious to receive more from his neighbor than he is willing, than he himself is willing to give to God. Yeeks! So this really gets down to it again. Most of us have a hard time seeing this as possible, much less as desirable. Pride runs strong in most of us, and it hides under religious clothing. St. Francis is taking us to a spirituality that is head and shoulders above the way most of us operate in our Christian lives. If we dare to listen to his teaching, absorb it without typical arguments, and let it soak into our souls, we might find a whole new way of freedom that was and is the way of the saints. The substance of this admonition, like many of the others, ah, see, I figured that one out on my own. Yay. Okay, I, we're almost done with the book study, so it's not like I'm a genius here. Um, yeah, that's nothing on me. Hey, that's kind of the admonition. Anyway. 
Yeah, look, pride just sneaks right back in there, doesn't it, friends? What a person is before God, that he is, and nothing more. The English word humility comes from the Latin meaning humus or earth or ground, right? The primary Greek word for humility is tapino. I have no idea if I pronounced that right. It means to be abased or brought low. Some say it means to be brought to the earth. Jesus says, he who is greatest among you shall be your servant. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. Matthew 23, 11 to 12. He also says, whoever humbles himself like this child, he is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 18, 4. And then, <laughs> I told you, John Michael Thomas is going to be like, I am reminded of the story. And this is going on about blessed Giles of Assisi and brother Elias. So there's another story. It says down here, another word for humility is prouse, which means meek, mild, or gentle. Jesus used this word when he preached the Sermon on the Mount. He said, blessed are the meek, prouse, for they should inherit the earth. He also uses it and tell the daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming to you. Humble, prouse, and mounted on an ass and on a colt, the foal of an ass. Matthew 21, 5. And Jesus is the primary example of this force. And how do you get it? And he's going on and i love this one in the middle of the page it says saint francis gives us a challenge we are to take pride not when we are praised but when others are i don't know that he necessarily said that he says to take no more pride in the good that god says and does through us than he does through others it doesn't say that we should take pride in what god is doing through others so that's that's interesting um and he has steps of humility which comes from chapter seven of saint benedict's rule <laughs> if i knew that friends i certainly didn't remember it but but he says that but this must be more rewritten than i realized well it's it's written out in in steps so I don't see the whole ladder thing here. It's This is written out on page 129. If you can hear my little neighbor, Topper, over there, he barks every time he comes outside and he sees another living soul outside. God bless him. He is adorable, though. He is adorable. Maybe he's just excited to see us, friends. So the, number one is that we keep the presence of God before us always and be in awe of God. So didn't this one talk about fear of God? I, I'm not... I'm saying there, hmm, I don't know, fear of God. That's a whole nother conversation that I am willing to have. That we keep the presence of God before us always and be in awe of God. I shut, So this is really modern speak and summarized. And this is a lot stronger speech. And I'm going to probably go with that one. Interesting. I'm probably going to go back and study this one again, and I'm going to encourage you as well. Do a study on the admonitions. I, I really should just get a printout or a book just on the admonitions. I wonder if they aren't in the early, probably in the early documents of St. Francis. So maybe we'll spend another day or two um, just looking at those admonitions another time. I find that interesting that he did go back just as I did. Yeah, so that probably wasn't me that came up with that idea, was it? Hey, may the name of the Lord be praised. <gasps> so we had a study earlier, um, a couple Fridays ago, um, maybe just last Friday when you're watching this, I think just, <laughs> just last Friday. And I think I call it the blasphemy of our lives. And instead of having the blasphemy of, of our eyes, let's have, <laughs> again, this is from another video recently. They all tie together from the holy moments of our lives. So I saw something beautiful. Call it out for what it is right away. May the name of the Lord be praised when something good happens to you. Just say that. May the name of the Lord be praised. Or bless the Holy Spirit. I don't know. Is that a thing you say? I don't know. May the name of the Lord be praised is a pretty good one. Um, and remember, that's what we're doing when we say the Our Father. Hallowed be thy name. We want thy name to be praised everywhere by all peoples. So none of this is, it's, it's funny because it's showing that this whole thing, none of it's me. This idea wasn't me. All this research wasn't me. It was the Holy Spirit. And yet I'm pretty happy about that. So I wouldn't say I'm humble yet, friends, but you can see it's a journey that we're all on. Maybe most of us are on. And 
a, it's not as clear cut. It's not like do this step one, step two, step three, although they write it out that way. It's not, it's not that clear and easy, is it? It's a struggle. And I think we can admit that. And one thing I will get, I will say from both of, well, all these books, whether it's the, the rule of the secular Franciscan order, the admonitions of St. Francis, whether it's the book, St. Francis of Assisi, Sermon on the Mount, or the rule of St. Benedict. What was it they all had wildly in common? Scripture. They had scripture in them, through them, everywhere in them. And so what do we need to do, friends? Go and spend some time with scripture. I think that's going to be your number one way of getting there is just reading scripture. If you can read scripture in the presence of the Lord in the tabernacle, even better. If you can go to daily mass, even better. These things are challenging for a lot of us and I'm not discounting they are. I'm only going to daily mass like three days a week now and only because a friend is has offered me a ride and God bless her for that. I think that's amazing and I'm so thrilled to be able to do it, but um, I wouldn't be doing it otherwise. I just couldn't get there. And so I'm very excited for that and thankful for that. So there are so many beautiful things going on in our lives and do what you can when you can. Now, if you are homebound, maybe you can pull up a, a live stream video or maybe you have a particularly beautiful crucifix that just brings you to tears and that you pray before. Maybe you have a statue of our blessed mother and she's pregnant with baby Jesus and you just love praying before that because it helps you envision and bring to mind that the God of all the world, right, came down. He humbled himself to be that little poor baby, right? And that should put you in awe of the Lord. And that is a great place to start, friends. Friends, Medicat tibi dominus et custodia te ascendet dominus facium sum tibi et miseria tortui convertet dominus voltum sum ad te et dominus bonus det tibi pacem. Amen. Nomini patris et filii et spiritus sancti. Amen. As always, like, share, and subscribe these videos. And if you can give a thanks, a super thanks, uh, buy a sticker, whatever, it's going to help out my family. And I thank you for that.